зовнішнє незалежне оцінювання з англійської мови. This is a listening test for the Ukrainian Independent External Evaluation. There are three tasks for the test. For each task of the test, there will be time for you to look through the questions and time for you to check your answers. At the start of each piece, you will hear this sound. You will have time at the end of the test to copy your answers onto the answer sheet. Now, look at task 1, questions 1 to 6. You will listen to six recordings. There are six questions in this task. For each question, choose the correct answer, A, B, or C. Now look at the three pictures for question one. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. My hobby is drawing. I mostly draw pictures of people, animals, and birds. I use crayons, pencils, and colored pencils to draw pictures. I give my best drawings to my nearest and dearest for their birthdays. Once I got the first prize in my school drawing competition, I spend all my free time drawing. For example, I often draw girls with different hairstyles like plaits or ponytails, but I like to draw sunsets best. I do love drawing and dream of becoming an artist one day when I grow up. Now listen again. My hobby is drawing. I mostly draw pictures of people, animals, and birds. I use crayons, pencils, and colored pencils to draw pictures. I give my best drawings to my nearest and dearest for their birthdays. Once I got the first prize in my school drawing competition, I spend all my free time drawing. For example, I often draw girls with different hairstyles like plaits or ponytails, but I like to draw sunsets best. I do love drawing and dream of becoming an artist one day when I grow up. Now look at the three pictures for question two. When I was in the fourth grade, I dreamt of becoming a great football player like Messi. My dad thought that for a Canadian, hockey sounded more natural. But my aunt gave me tennis lessons as a birthday present. I learned how to play a new sport, which I love. I might have thought the present was stupid when I was younger, because it wasn't a toy or something, but I absolutely love this sport and can't imagine my life without it. Now listen again. When I was in the fourth grade, I dreamt of becoming a great football player like Messi. My dad thought that for a Canadian, hockey sounded more natural. But my aunt gave me tennis lessons as a birthday present. I learned how to play a new sport, which I love. I might have thought the present was stupid when I was younger, because it wasn't a toy or something, but I absolutely love this sport and can't imagine my life without it. Now look at the three pictures for question three. I'd like to order lunch, please. What would you like? I'd like to order a cup of coffee, a tuna sandwich, and a muffin. I'm sorry. We're currently out of tuna sandwiches. May I suggest a cheese sandwich or a chicken one instead? I'd prefer the chicken one. Anything else? Maybe a salad? No, thank you. Okay, no salad. Room service will be charged to your account. Is that all right? That's fine. It will be up shortly. Enjoy your food, sir. Now listen again. I'd like to order lunch, please. What would you like? I'd like to order a cup of coffee, a tuna sandwich, and a muffin. I'm sorry. We're currently out of tuna sandwiches. 
May I suggest a cheese sandwich or a chicken one instead? I'd prefer the chicken one. Anything else? Maybe a salad? No, thank you. Okay, no salad. Room service will be charged to your account. Is that all right? That's fine. It will be up shortly. Enjoy your food, sir. Now you have 10 seconds to look at question 4. It's fine for you to disagree, but it seems as if you're in the minority. While I admit that there are students who don't do their homework at all, I spend hours on my homework every night, and that doesn't even include my community service and my extracurriculars. Other people on sports teams and other high commitment activities have even less time to spend on homework, and I can say for a fact that homework is one of the main reasons students aren't getting enough sleep at night. Now listen again. It's fine for you to disagree, but it seems as if you're in the minority. While I admit that there are students who don't do their homework at all, I spend hours on my homework every night, and that doesn't even include my community service and my extracurriculars. Other people on sports teams and other high commitment activities have even less time to spend on homework, and I can say for a fact that homework is one of the main reasons students aren't getting enough sleep at night. Now you have 10 seconds to look at question 5. Observing a pianist playing can be a powerful emotional experience. As a scientist and a man who used to play the piano at school, I understand that this skill requires complex coordination of many different brain regions. In our lab, we want to understand whether music training during childhood improves brain functions for processing sound. These functions are important for the development of language and reading skills. Over the past two decades, several investigators have reported differences in the brain and behavior of musicians compared to non-musicians. Music training has been found to be correlated to better language and mathematical skills and a higher IQ. Now listen again. Observing a pianist playing can be a powerful emotional experience. As a scientist and a man who used to play the piano at school, I understand that this skill requires complex coordination of many different brain regions. In our lab, we want to understand whether music training during childhood improves brain functions for processing sound. These functions are important for the development of language and reading skills. Over the past two decades, several investigators have reported differences in the brain and behavior of musicians compared to non-musicians. Music training has been found to be correlated to better language and mathematical skills and a higher IQ. Now you have 10 seconds to look at question 6. Marilyn, I'm thinking of renting an apartment in the city center. You know, I've only lived in the suburbs, so tell me if I'm missing something about living in the city. Well, Alice, the first thing you need to know is how much you are spending already on trains to get from the suburbs to your job every day. When you take this into account, the city apartment may look like a better option. What else are you thinking about? Well. I would also like to live within walking distance of shops, restaurants, and parks. And how easy will it be for friends to visit me in terms of parking? As far as I know, everything closes at 6 p.m., though there are a lot of stores nearby. Parking can also be a problem. Even if you don't own a car, 
You might get one later. Plus, your visitors might need to park. Now listen again. Marilyn, I'm thinking of renting an apartment in the city center. You know, I've only lived in the suburbs, so tell me if I'm missing something about living in the city. Well, Alice, the first thing you need to know is how much you are spending already on trains to get from the suburbs to your job every day. When you take this into account, the city apartment may look like a better option. What else are you thinking about? Well, I would also like to live within walking distance of shops, restaurants, and parks. And how easy will it be for friends to visit me in terms of parking? As far as I know, everything closes at 6 p.m., though there are a lot of stores nearby. Parking can also be a problem. Even if you don't own a car, you might get one later. Plus, your visitors might need to park. This is the end of task one. Now turn to task two, questions seven to 11. Look at the five statements for this task. You will listen to a recorded text. Decide if each statement is true or false. For statements seven to 11, choose T if the statement is true according to the text and F if it is false. Now you will have 20 seconds to look at the questions for task two. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Quiet fireworks. It sounds like a joke. Usually those bright bursts of color come with equally impressive bangs. But some fireworks shows are designed to please the eyes without hitting the ears. In parts of Europe, quiet fireworks displays have grown increasingly common. In Britain, Places close to residents, wildlife, or farm animals may have only quiet fireworks. Designers of quiet fireworks pay greater attention to the rich color effects and visual choreography, making sure their designs are symmetrical and well-timed to music. Quiet fireworks displays can do without big explosions and still present an impressive show. Of course, there are pros and cons to a quiet fireworks show. Because they do not include big aerial explosions, quiet shows cannot entertain a large audience. As a result, traditionally big shows, like those on the 4th of July, would need to be divided into smaller viewings. Quiet fireworks can, however, be more colorful when the most explosive fireworks have only a little color. The real promise behind quiet fireworks, however, is the possibility that they could reduce the harmful effects of traditional fireworks which includes stress on animals and damage to people's hearing. Fireworks can cause birds to panic. Loud fireworks also scare larger mammals like deer out into roads where they can get hit by cars. Pet shelters also claim to take in the most runaway dogs each year on July the 5th. Having sensitive hearing, dogs hurt themselves trying to escape or hide. For people, loud fireworks can lead to hearing loss. Fireworks can be as loud as thunderclaps. Young kids can be frightened by nonstop loud noise as children are especially sensitive to loud noises. Quiet fireworks are not completely silent, but they don't cause problems to people and surrounding. Loud bangs are not everybody's cup of tea. Now listen again. Quiet fireworks. It sounds like a joke. Usually those bright bursts of color come with equally impressive bangs. But some fireworks shows are designed to please the eyes without hitting the ears. In parts of Europe, quiet fireworks displays have grown increasingly common. In Britain, 
places close to residents, wildlife, or farm animals may have only quiet fireworks. Designers of quiet fireworks pay greater attention to the rich color effects and visual choreography, making sure their designs are symmetrical and well-timed to music. Quiet fireworks displays can do without big explosions and still present an impressive show. Of course, there are pros and cons to a quiet fireworks show. Because they do not include big aerial explosions, quiet shows cannot entertain a large audience. As a result, traditionally big shows, like those on the 4th of July, would need to be divided into smaller viewings. Quiet fireworks can, however, be more colorful when the most explosive fireworks have only a little color. The real promise behind quiet fireworks, however, is the possibility that they could reduce the harmful effects of traditional fireworks, which include stress on animals and damage to people's hearing. Fireworks can cause birds to panic. Loud fireworks also scare larger mammals like deer out into roads where they can get hit by cars. Pet shelters also claim to take in the most runaway dogs each year on July the 5th. Having sensitive hearing, dogs hurt themselves trying to escape or hide. For people, loud fireworks can lead to hearing loss. Fireworks can be as loud as thunderclaps. Young kids can be frightened by nonstop loud noise as children are especially sensitive to loud noises. Quiet fireworks are not completely silent, but they don't cause problems to people and surrounding. Loud bangs are not everybody's cup of tea. This is the end of task two. Now turn to task three, questions 12 to 16. You will listen to an interview. For questions 12 to 16, choose the correct answer, A, B, or C. Now you have 45 seconds to look at the questions for task three. Now we are ready to start. Listen carefully. You will hear the recording twice. Hi, dear listeners. Our today's guest is Carla Fernandez, a fashion designer from Mexico. Carla, what stimulated your interest in fashion? I love the power of clothing and the transformative quality of dressing up. When I was very young, maybe five years old, I remember dressing up for different events at school, and I took pride in having the best outfit. Later, when I was in high school, I would make my own clothing, which fitted me very badly because I had no idea what I was doing. I made myself trousers that were way too big, so I would wrap laces around my legs to make them fit. My friends saw me dressed this way and no longer wanted to be seen with me at lunch. That experience also made me realize the power that clothing has, that you can control how you are perceived and what you communicate. Clothing is a language all of its own. What made you take fashion more seriously and make a career out of it? I also noticed the incredible clothing that the native people in Mexico wear, and I was excited by how amazingly well-dressed they seemed in comparison to the majority of people in the streets of Mexico City. But when I listened to people talk about fashion in Mexico, they weren't aware of these amazing colors and garments. 
Rather, they had the belief that Mexicans didn't know how to dress and simply looked to the USA for inspiration. So I had the idea to try and create something I thought could be classed as Mexican fashion. I wanted to challenge these views. Are you self-taught or did you study fashion design? I wanted to take a fashion course in London, but it was too expensive for me. So I studied art history in Mexico because there were no real fashion courses at universities here at that time. After that, I went and studied fashion at a small institution called Ibero Mexicana de Diseño, where the course was very hands-on and I learned how to design and make clothes. I was a fully capable dressmaker by the time I finished there. These two areas of study were both very useful for what I wanted to do with my own designs. What do you think of today's fashion? I think people today seem willing to dress a little bit differently from one another. I definitely approve of young people today making more effort in the way they dress than young people did 10 years ago. People are getting tired of just wearing a t-shirt and jeans every day, and it's great to see people express themselves more in what they wear. As for me, I'm quite small, so I'd avoid long dresses or anything with big shoulders. What advice would you give to young designers? I've learned that as a fashion designer, you depend on many, many people to make things happen. So you need to assemble a group of people to do things well. Every day is a challenge, especially in a market like Mexico. So you need designers, great tailors, good administrators, accountants, good sales staff, people that contribute to the company, not just people who are there to make up the numbers. I must admit that talent and education are not enough to get to the top of the fashion world. What is your motto? The future is handmade. Now listen again. Hi, dear listeners. Our today's guest is Carla Fernandez, a fashion designer from Mexico. Carla, what stimulated your interest in fashion? I love the power of clothing and the transformative quality of dressing up. When I was very young, maybe five years old, I remember dressing up for different events at school, and I took pride in having the best outfit. Later, when I was in high school, I would make my own clothing which fitted me very badly because I had no idea what I was doing. I made myself trousers. They were way too big, so I would wrap laces around my legs to make them fit. My friends saw me dressed this way and no longer wanted to be seen with me at lunch. That experience also made me realize the power that clothing has, that you can control how you are perceived and what you communicate. Clothing is a language all of its own. What made you take fashion more seriously and make a career out of it? I also noticed the incredible clothing that the native people in Mexico wear, and I was excited by how amazingly well-dressed they seemed in comparison to the majority of people in the streets of Mexico City. But when I listened to people talk about fashion in Mexico, they weren't aware of these amazing colors and garments, Rather, they had the belief that Mexicans didn't know how to dress and simply looked to the USA for inspiration. So, I had the idea to try and create something I thought could be classed as Mexican fashion. I wanted to challenge these views. Are you self-taught or did you study fashion design? I wanted to take a fashion course in London, but it was too expensive for me. So I studied art history in Mexico because there were no real fashion courses at universities here at that time. After that, I went and studied fashion at a small institution called Ibero Mexicana de Diseño, where the course was very hands-on and I learned how to design and make clothes. I was a fully capable dressmaker by the time I finished there. These two areas of study were both very useful for what I wanted to do with my own designs. What do you think of today's fashion? I think people today seem willing to dress a little bit differently from one another. I definitely approve of young people today making more effort in the way they dress than young people did 10 years ago. 
People are getting tired of just wearing a t-shirt and jeans every day, and it's great to see people express themselves more in what they wear. As for me, I'm quite small, so I'd avoid long dresses or anything with big shoulders. What advice would you give to young designers? I've learned that as a fashion designer, you depend on many, many people to make things happen. So you need to assemble a group of people to do things well. Every day is a challenge, especially in a market like Mexico. So you need designers, great tailors, good administrators, accountants, good sales staff, people that contribute to the company, not just people who are there to make up the numbers. I must admit that talent and education are not enough to get to the top of the fashion world. What is your motto? The future is handmade. This is the end of task three. This is the end of the listening test. Thank you. Роботу над частиною розуміння мови на слух завершено. Приступайте до виконання наступної частини тесту.